Hi guys, so in this video we will take a look at what are these sketch entities and what are the sketch tools that we can use to modify these sketch uh, sketches that we create them using these sketch entities. So sketch entities and sketch tools are two different components of this uh, SOLIDWORKS and so let's get uh, started with a new part in the SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to click on the part click OK. Uh, let's use the unit system of millimeters. And if we want to select, let's say, either the top plane or the front plane, let me start off with the front plane this time. I click on it and then click on the sketch to start sketching on the front plane. There are different sketch entities available on your command manager uh, along with their expanded uh, options that you could select from the drop down menu so for example for line you can choose line or center line or midpoint line circle you can draw it using two different options circle and the perimeter circle and uh, then you have uh, various options for the rectangle also you can create the straight slot or the uh, three point arc slot center point straight slot so different options for creating a variety of slots then you can create uh, three different types of arcs center point, tangent, and three-point arc. Uh, the polygon you can create, uh, then the splines, ellipse, and uh, parabola, or the conic sections. Uh, you can create a sketch fillet or sketch chamfer. You can also annotate on the sketch using the text. So these are all the different sketch entities, something that you create uh, on the graphics area. And the more list, uh, expanded list of the sketch entities, you can find it uh, under the tools. And if you scroll down, you can see the option for sketch entities. And there you have all the expanded uh, list of the different options for sketch uh, entities that you can uh, use to create your geometry. Okay, so let's take a look at one by one all these uh, different types of sketch entities. Once you draw the line, uh, and again, as I emphasized in the previous video, you need to make sure that at least there is some relationship of your sketch with the origin. So I can uh, create uh, lines. It automatically uh, lets you align with uh, either in the horizontal or the vertical direction uh, or, you know, something like that. Once it forms a closed loop, um, you can see that it's shaded, which means that you can uh, extract or you can extrude it. Okay, so that's the uh, straight line option. Uh, if we want to create a center line, then I can start creating a center line. So you would notice that it, the center line is created in the uh, dash line format and it's not a part of the sketch. Okay, it is just used for uh, referencing uh, or for the purpose of assigning some dimensions. So this is not a part of an active sketch uh, that can be um, extruded. <coughs> okay. Uh, also, we can create a midpoint line. Uh, in terms of the rectangle, so you can create a center rectangle and you know, you can drag around with this uh, center or you can create a corner rectangle so corner rectangle again starts off from one corner and then you can drag it uh, to complete uh, the rectangle by expanding it uh, there's a three point corner rectangle so you basically select uh, you know three points and then you can complete the rectangle so all these different options you can um, you know explore on your own just to see the different ways of creating a sketch entity Okay. I can always uh, select all of them at once and delete it. Uh, if I want to create a straight slot, uh, I can start off uh, something like this. It start off with the center line, and then once you click and um, you know create the uh, length, uh, then you can move your cursor away uh, to create uh, the slot, and then you can assign the dimensions. So you have uh, different ways of creating the slot as well. You know, so you can uh, um, explore 
these uh, uh, different types of slots uh, as how you can create it obviously uh, the circle can be created with uh, the center option which is most commonly used other way to create is the uh, uh, you know the perimeter circle option so you click the two points and then uh, depending on where you uh, what diameter you want uh, you can uh, click the third point uh, to finish off uh, the circle and then you can drag on its uh, center and then uh, move it around three different types of arcs are here so let's take a look at uh, uh, you know these three different uh, types of arcs first let me get rid of this um, so if I first let's say I create uh, a horizontal line another horizontal line something like this and if I choose the option for the three-point arc Let's start off with that. So I'm going to click on the first point here, second point here, and then I have to click on the third point wherever I want to, uh, you know, use the center for this arc. I can select the third point, and then that is how I can uh, make that arc. Okay. So that's one way of creating this arc. Um, the other way uh, is the center point arc so if I click somewhere uh, let's say I click um, here that becomes the center and then wherever I click the next mouse click then I can uh, you know create uh, the arc accordingly so we started off with this uh, circle and so if we click and drag uh, and you know click and drag this uh, this point then not only the length of the line changes but also the arc uh, moves along with it okay because this arc is related with uh, with this point as the center of that arc and the third option is the tangent arc so if you click on the tangent arc start off with one point you know start off uh, you know the um, other uh, clicks click somewhere else so what's going to happen is that it will create this tangent arc as you can notice with the constraint that is created of the tangent along with it so this arc is basically tangent to this line so you don't really need to uh, worry about creating that uh, relation okay so that's the uh, tangent arc uh, again another example I can show you here is that if I just create uh, two lines and I want to join them using a semicircle so if I go and click on the uh, tangent arc that is how I can create the tangent arc so you can notice that there is a uh, tangent relationship uh, for this point between this arc and the straight line so that is how we can create the uh, different kinds of uh, arcs um, let's take a look at uh, the polygon so again the polygon is simple depending on how many uh, edges for that polygon you want you want to build a pentagon or a hexagon or uh, whatever the number of sites you want you can enter them here so here if we are using the uh, let's say hexagon you start off in the circle and you would notice uh, that you can create the hexagon in whichever orientation you want if I make it something like this you can either make it as an inscribed circle as you can see this dotted circle which is inscribed on this polygon by choosing this option or you can also make it as a circumscribed and then you can dimension it uh, accordingly to finish off the um, uh, the polygon so right now I can click and I can uh, you know uh, drag it or either zoom in zoom out by changing the dimension the way I want but let's say I want to constrain this, uh, uh, you know, this hexagon completely. Or you know, right now you can see that it's all shown in blue color. So if I give the uh, dimension to this, let's say, you know, you can give the dimension to the edge, or you can give it to the circle, you know, depending on you know how wherever you want. But let's say I want to give the dimension between this line and this line. So this is called, called as the distance across the flats of this uh, hexagon. Let's say. 
we make that as 150 millimeters you still don't see uh, all the edges are turning into blue color so uh, you know only the circle is now turned into the dark color because of that dimension and I can still drag and move this uh, uh, hexagon uh, you know uh, around that inscribed circle so then if I click on this line you'll see a pop-up uh, window appears and then if I make that as horizontal which means that I'm constraining this line to be horizontal so now all the edges are shown in the dark color so now the circle is uh, or the hexagon is fully defined as you can notice under the uh, status bar as well okay um, let's take a look at these two options uh, the sketch fillet and the sketch chamfer so the sketch fillet is uh, the sketch entity that adds the radius okay uh, so the entities to fill it so if I click this entity and this entity depending on the value that we want to put it can also show you the preview let's say we want to put 20 millimeters here and click OK so there is a radius that is added uh, which has the uh, you know value of 20 millimeters as we specified and this fillet is tangent at the point joining between the straight line and this arc that is how we can do the sketch fillet um, also I can do it uh, for multiple times so entities to fillet let's say uh, instead of selecting these two lines I can directly select a vertex and I can make multiple selections and create the fillet all across right so that is how I can make the uh, make use of the fillet option. Okay, let's take a look at the chamfer option. But uh, before that, let me um, you know make the uh, let's say I just go and just make a new part. So in this one, let's say I start off with the front plane, and let's say I start. Uh, Okay, let me change that to the corner rectangle option. Let's say I do that. Use the dimension. Uh, let me just put some values here. And let me extrude it. Let's use the uh, 30 millimeters for extruding this rectangular box. So this is the uh, extruded feature that we have uh, created and again after we made this feature under the features tab you can see the fillet and the chamfer are there but these fillet and chamfer are used on the uh, extruded part what we really want is that uh, use of the fillet and chamfer on the sketch itself so uh, I'm going to uh, delete this feature and just come back to the sketch so now you see once you delete the feature your sketch is now grayed out so I'm going to click on the sketch and say edit sketch now the sketch becomes active and if I now want to use the chamfer if I click on sketch chamfer uh, let's say it's 10 millimeters equal distance and I'm using the distance distance option so if I click on the corner point you can notice that that vertex which was there the corner vertex is now uh, the material has been removed 10 millimeters on both the directions uh, with the straight edge joining between them and so that is the chamfer and I'm clicking it OK same thing as the fillet you can uh, use the chamfer uh, even I can change the value here let's say 20 and you can use this chamfer uh, multiple times okay so that's the chamfer uh, as how we can use it for these sketch entities the last thing for these sketch entities is that uh, we can also make an ellipse control 8 will always bring it back to the normal uh, viewpoint so if I start off here 
and I click two points and then you have the option of uh, you know selecting this sketch um, so that uh, you know you can then adjust the dimensions or provide the constraints in order to make the um, ellipse or you can also make some of those conic sections as well uh, making the splines uh, is uh, slightly complicated um, if we are going to use the equation driven curve so I'm not going to go over that uh, in this video but you can create the spline uh, the way the spline works is that you know you start off creating the uh, points and then you can join using the nonlinear or the uh, higher order uh, equation driven curve so if you know the equation you can uh, make use of that equation option and create these splines okay so this is not really using uh, the direct feed of equations but this is just uh, you know randomly selected locations of the points uh, to create the spline curve so that's all uh, for the sketch uh, entities and in the next video we will continue with the sketch tools